And so the annual Westville fixture returns to Inland in 2024. And in particular, Chepi High School for Boys get their turn to host their friendly arrivals as well as distant neighbours in Westville Boys High. A warm welcome to all our Super Sports Schools viewers to yet a, another schoolboy Saturday fixture. And this time our focus firmly fixated upon this fixture which has quite a special heart in the place of both schools. It is the annual invitational between Chepi High School for boys and their Zululand rivals, Westville Boys High. And uh, two teams that are really experiencing somewhat joys in their own ways in the last past recent weeks will look to continue their form in front of a decent crowd here in Johannesburg this afternoon. I promise you it's bound to be good, it's bound to exhilarate, it's bound to excite. It's JB versus West Bowl. As players make their way then to the dugout to make their way to the pitch. Learners ready themselves on the pitch for the festivities. I tell you what, off the pitch is going to be something special too. Westville have got the entire drums and the entire band ready. JP High School for Boys have their marimba band all primed and ready on the other side. So I can promise that you can expect to hear lots and lots and lots of noise in the background to this game. But that's what schoolboy sports is made of. Let's enjoy this Westville entrance. Celebrating 69 years in 2024, a Westville Boys High. The last time that they beat JP High School for Boys was in 2022, and it means that, that the last time that they were in Johannesburg, they were successful. They are led out by their captain, Seth Gwen, and they look to cause an upset in Johannesburg, just like they did against Monument a couple of weeks ago. But on the other side of the coin, of course, are the Giants Slayers, the school that's so high in confidence at the moment, playing with so much class, so much joy, enjoying their rugby. They beat Great College just a fortnight ago, played some good rugby at the Kes Easter Festival, where they put brushed Queens and Bradwach to the side. And now they'll witness the black and white make their way on, led out by Kutazo Rashivaga, the deputy head boy, of the school. Moment of silence, I think, for Bowie of JP. No, not quite yet. I think we should have the first team of JP High School for Boys make their way. Special, special moment this. <laughs> well, it is for Bowie, young man of Chepi High School for boys that did unfortunately so untimely pass away right at the beginning of the rugby season. And this is one proper gesture from the Westville side. Owaka Manaka will go and receive the jersey for Bowie. And that's what they've said in this JP High School for Boys team this year. They've said that almost invariably they're dedicating the entire season, the entire 2020-24 to Bowie to play in the second team side. Now that is one hell of a gesture from Westville Boys. And a schoolboy rugby! And that's why it gets those moments, those goosebump moments where those little arms on your, your, those little hair on your arms rise up. That was definitely, definitely one of those. And I'm sure Bowie smiling down from the heavens on this beautiful moment here on the Collard Field. That's what schoolboy 
rugby is made of. And Westfall has shown that they are proper, proper celestial dance partners for this epic bout. But now it's time to welcome the famous black and white. And at the moment it will feel a lot like that black and white is indeed gold. Second team, they were successful in the game prior, if you're just joining us now. Won my 24 points to 7. We played a good brand of rugby there. They only conceded right towards the end. And uh, Westfall got their first and only try of the game, but they played such a good brand of rugby. And such they have over the past two weeks. Saints were here last week, and now they welcome Westfall. They'll go to... Uffies in a week's time. Then they'll play King Edward the seventh school on the twenty seventh of April. So a decorum of silence then as we welcome the black and white of JP High School for Boys. Will be led out by Kutadzo. Rasi Vaga, you see him now, he appears in your picture. Back of him is the head boy of the school, Risma. Deputy head boy and head boy, both from Limpopo. And what a partnership pairing. Go on to Instagram and check out a JP Boys alumni for one hell of a video that showcases these youngsters and some of their thoughts after a great college success in the season that they've had so far, which has been stellar. One of the teams to look out for at the moment from a South African schoolboy perspective, looking to finish within those top 10, top 5 positions. This is JP High School for boys. <laughs> Jubilant at the moment. This place is buzzing with rugby talents in the past couple of weeks. Speaking to Mr. Hammond, one of the rugby organizers and forward pack coach says that the amount of people that have come to be watching the games for JP in the recent weeks has been absolutely phenomenal. And so those are the battle lines drawn then. It's JP versus Westville. Names that you can look out for from a JP perspective, Andre Poulton, Bongan Gumalo, Luca Treveson, Logan, Luke Wanga, Nathan Risma, Koza, Terence Ato. And watch out for the man in the 10 jumper, Naima Hollenbach, debut in the 10 jumper today for JP. West for Lever, Kona Maseko, Ross Calvert, Bandine, Mustafa Dina, Rich Mito, Seth Gwen is their captain in the 6 jumper. And it's Unati Mlontwa, the man in the 10, he played for the SA and the 17-7s last year, but this is actually Joel Gopman that will kick us off into the Johannesburg sky. It's JP versus Westfall, and Westfall have got that one. Big pressure on JP. Let's see how to, as to how both sides really settle into this one. I think that's going to want to be one of the most important team things as to how they settle into the game and really make it uncomfortable for JP on their own home turf I think will be the most important thing for Westville to show in the early exchanges that they are here to play that they want it they pack a good punch in Westville and they've shown it in recent weeks their 13 Mitchell uh, Michael Satade is very very explosive the talisman uh, in the season so far for Westville has been Chris Kluter, who's operating in the sixth jersey today, operating alongside the captain, Seth Quinn. Risma, the head boy. Risma Koza, Risma gets it out for JP. And now there's the man, Naima, gets it out to the fullback, Sanele Similani, who wants to dance. He's brought down now, just shy of 22 meters. Westfall setting up a wall and they've got the penalty there, Jeppy. have held on to it for just a prolonged bit of time there. Somalani needs to release immediately that daylight rule. 
And so Koopman for Westville will go out. Kick back. Right foot up. Does so very well. So while beating uh, Monument may not have been as high up as the great college victory that JP High School for Boys had, but that's the game in particular where Westville showed that they have that big game temperament. They knew how to step up and really play against the big boys when it matters. And so that philosophy would have been somewhat brought into this one too. Set piece doesn't work out well there for Westville. Talent Satole. Naima. First team debut for the man in that 10 jumper. Westville with the tap and go. It might land favorably for them. Their pressure on the JP men. It's picked up. This is Mustafa Kina. Prasima Koza, I think, has won that one back for the black and white. They're going nice and direct to Logan Leisha. Kutazo Rashivaga is the first receiver there. And he's going to try to run it from deep. Now Westfall have got it received by Chris Cluto, who's been the talisman. And that's six jumper, Maseko. This is good movement, trying to spot the gap there, does Africa. It's indirect again by Kina, gets that big hit in. So JP High School for Boys will have a couple of big games in the next couple of weeks. As we see Kuapman now, good tackle by Sanele Samalani. This is picked up by Ivan Moldman. Good counter drive by JP Talent Satole there at the breakdown point. And he'll go nice and short there to Wangando. Matthew Kutia, you'll notice, is not playing in the 10 jumper for JP in this game. Something somewhat of a stomach bug after the St. Stephens game. And then Youngster just wasn't feeling well enough to play. But I was speaking to the coach uh, before the game and he did mention that Matthew is on the bench for this one. In case they need him to come on. But what they're hoping is that they won't need him to come on and that Naima Hollenbach can really hold his wits about him and play in that 10 roll. Ross Calvert finds Reese Mitchell well. Reese Mitchell involved in water polo in the offseason. And then free giving a penalty to Tepi, I think, there for an obstruction. To Westville for an obstruction. Oh, it is indeed a JP penalty. And they have uh, Samalani there. Westfolk arrived here about midday yesterday. And it's uh, Johannesburg after leaving Kazuru Natal in about 6 7 in the morning. They were here at midday. Many of the other sports were already in action on Friday afternoon. The likes of chess, tennis, squash, all played yesterday. Talent Satole wants to use it now for JP. Urging his forward pack to move on. And now I think he'll get a hold of it, Satole. First receiver pass is not the best, but the handling is... Good enough, it makes two talent to Tole will pick up and go himself here. Yeah. He's brought down by Unati Mlonjo. Picked up by Westfall and that possession has changed hands. 
Now they try to go in the midfield. Alteration of position in that mid has warranted the ball for this. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. One more pass. And he may be in. This is Grubman in the corner. With the Superman dive to send Westville into Rapture. And blood is first drawn by the visitors in Johannesburg. Look at the scenes. Oh, goodness. Woo! <laughs> They're here to play. That was my first initial thoughts when got given the scam that I hope Westfall would come and put something onto the Giant Slayers. Boy, they have. And they've got the first goal. Look at that. What a sight. So, right on this right hand touch line, Unatim Launchua will try to get the further two. Mlonjo then was involved in the SA under 17 sevens last year. He played for the Shock schools in that particular competition. Need to negotiate direction on this one. Johannesburg, JP goes silent. Nopi steps, he has the direction and he's on the money! Money bling bling, it ain't a thing. Unatim Lonchua has got the two. And the boys from Westville are in the lead in Johannesburg just like they were in 2022 when they were here. In that game then, they won by 15 points to nil. Three unanswered tries by JP. JP not on the score sheets in their home game. Bang, it's landed and nice and direct. Met with reasonable chippy contact there too. Launch was in the pocket and ready to send out. Sonny Desamalani straight in the air. Exciting youngster. There's the step by Sanele. Now another one. He's the brother of Wandesile Similani, who's now at the Stormers. Playing alongside Achiva Diamani. Once upon a time, it was Diamani and Similani on this call-out field. 2016. Out once again into Similani, who's in that pocket. Jodwell Kupman. He's having lots of fun so far. Gets a nice touch finder too. So, this one is, it, it, it's very hard to predict uh, the annual JP Westville invitation. It goes one year, it goes the one way, and then the other, it goes the other. But, how it, it's proven to work in the past, um, in, in terms of the head-to-head, -head, what it's told us. When a team is away, that's when it wins. So JP will win at Westville, and then Westville usually wins at JP. For the last time that JP won at JP, you'd have to go all the way um, back to about 2021, I think. And that too was all the way in Westville. So before that, this is good by Lindalani. Has Rashivaga on his inside. Another one. And now JP are in. Right underneath the balls. An immediate response by JP. It's McMillan Mongwana that gets underneath. And it's good play. It all starts with Lindalani. Then Rashivaga all the way to McMillan, Mongwana, and then underneath the poles. Game alive now towards the neutral supporter certainly would have wanted. Rashivaga has a direct eye line to go with this one. One of the most difficult of kicks he'll take, Kuti Rashivaga. The only player for JP to play at last year's Craven Week. 
Makes no mistake. Kuti Rashivaga, deputy head boy at the side, has been at the school since 2019, 2020 rather, my apologies. And playing such good rugby, watch out for that youngster. I can't wait to see what he can do in the bigger games this year. He's really proven himself against the likes of Gray. So, even Steven and Kupman launches us again at the Collard Field. Unatim Lanchua. It's a kicking game to find the space, and that's a very good kick. Oh, it's a good kick to put pressure on Naima Olembach. And he's making his debut, saw the sun in the sky and the ball coming and didn't know what was occurring. And Westfall have got the knock on. A dozen minutes that have gone here in Johannesburg. Last year's game did really yield success for JP's Black and Whites. Really having a better second half than the first, winning that game by 43 points to 31. Yeah. Oh, it's picked up well by Ryan Pester. Now the layoff for. Georgian Africana. Westfall have the penalty here. Scrum, says our referee. Chippy were at home last week against St. Stethians College. Brushed them over to the side with relative ease, scoring 49 points in the process. While on the other side of the coin, Westfall were at the hands of a 19-9 loss to Durban High School in very, very tough Durban weather conditions. Talon Sotole is high up there. Now Pastor has got it and he's going to go by himself. Risma Koza. No, that's Mangwana. Once again, the claps that you're hearing are because of Westfall have their penalty. Good battle at scrum time. Kona Maseko, Ross Calvert, Bandile, Mkwana, Mustafa Trina, Rhys Mitchell are some big boys for Westville. Up against the big pack also in Bonga Ngumalo, Luca Trevison, and the like. So, big shove and Westville have it out in that corner goes Afrikaner! And Westville have their second, just like that in the blink of an eye, they're back in the lead. There's just something about this Westville team when they play here at the Collard Field that ignites them. And Jordian Afrikaner is in and creeps behind to put the KZN school in the lead. See their learners have taken off their blazers now. <laughs> Hot Johannesburg sun, but they won't mind where this one's going. So he's all the way now on the left touchline. Matim Launcher. This one favors then his right boot. Very, very exciting, this young man. Lots of pace on him too. And he's a fair, could have sold 22 out. <laughs> now he hits it and it splits the uprights and gets the two points for Westfall boys. 
Oh, he's been perfect kicking wise. That's two from two. And two kicks that not from the easiest of distances to convert, I promise you. Those look much easier on the eye. And it's Westfall Jubilation, JP Silence, 14-7. Offered Garner straight in the air and then goes to Mlantua. Joy pass a cannon of a boot on him, does Mlantua. Evolved at the Sharks last year. I'm sure he's one too that will be looking to really pick his hand up for those Craven and Academy weeks. And they'll make it tough for JP. Right up there, they'll play those drums and play them. Make it difficult for the set piece taker. Orthodox of schoolboy rugby this, but they go right to the tail, JP, and the pressure toils. One, two, Culvert. Pastor is there, and then now it's picked up by Kluter. This is Ryan Pastor has gone to launch Guapman lays one off for Moorman. JP Man needs to get out there. This is Mlonjo. He's going to try to go for the grab by himself. It doesn't land favorably. It does land for Maserko. Similarly, he gets some contact there. Pastor. And there's a big hit once again by JP Similani chasing. And Sunny Alice Similani still moving. Guapman gets it and returns the favor with the grabber. Rashivaga. No options. Needs to release. Good appreciation of the laws. Does so immediately. And the corner is Nahima. And that kick is not the greatest, but it will do for JP. 16A Grand Como for that youngster last year. It's his first time in the black and white. Talks on the side between our two refs. Lots and lots of noise in the background coming from Westville now. They're always up for it when they make the trip to Johannesburg. Ross Calvert one of their own quarter of an hour to go in the first half and it's gathered by JP the passes are not great and they've warranted a penalty for Westville Melanchua looks to pounce I think now the, the referee will bring it back for a knock on They had a very good victory a couple of years ago as well against JP High School for Boys. That time they got it at home uh, in 2021, Dead Westville. It was their first home fixture that season in front of a newly renovated Bowden's Pavilion. And that year the second team also made good work of JP, beating them 52-0. Not the greatest of trips up to Zululand for JP in that particular season but they then came back two years later 2023 away so they'll need to do it in front of their home supporters for the first time goes right back into that traffic does Ryan Pistor so Clito will have to go makeshift and then goes to Seth Gwynn his captain oh it's not forward and JP will get the penalty there or was it? Yes, it was. Or oh, holding, that's what the referee is eventually blown for. Sanele played in the second team last year, did the young Similani. In fact, 
I recall when I was a uh, young grade eight watching rugby for the first time, his older brother Wandi Sile Somalani also played in those bright green Puma boots. So uh, must be something happening there. Jeez, it was exciting to watch Wandi Sile. Net, yes, team, uh, I think beat Westfall. We went to Westfall that year in 2016 with Wandi Sile Somalani, Achiva Diamane, Tyrant Green. We've all gone on to do good things, JP rugby wise. So they go on. Working at Chippy now, they are there. Eventually the man's brought down, Talon Satole uses it now. Goes to Kutadzo Rashivaga. Satole back to the right where Andre Poulton is. Now to Luke Cannon. Rashi Vargas isolated there and the referee will bring back for another infringement. A much earlier one. For the offside. In fact, here's an interesting stat. Last year when JB played Westwell at half time, they weren't in the lead in that game either. It had to be a very good second half by the black and whites too forge and go further into the lead when they were all the way in KZN 43-31 just a 12 points in that one that's a good take by Nathan Clarson now comes Luca Treveson the deputy head boy in fact all three JP stage prefects in the first team this is the head boy Corsa who lays it off from Longwana and the referee hasn't given it there it was a forward pass it looked slightly forward in truth it did look slightly forward and him longwana thought he would have been in for another one yes interesting uh for the first time in a long time all three jp's stage prefix the deputy head boy and the head boy in the first team luca treverson kuti rashivaga and rishma koza that must make for quite uh, quite a leadership team you can imagine they lead by a stern hand I'm sure the great eights don't mess about there which will have their, some of their leaders in their team themselves showed really what they were made about in that victory against Munas he went far in a competition known as the Mortoval Cup last year. I haven't beaten Monas in quite some time. Another schoolboy fishers. I know that Kears is playing Parktown. And there the black and white is of JP High School for Boys. Taken well by Kennan. Neymar. Advantage weighed for JP. Satole will play at shorts. There it is Rashi Baga. Making Nice work as first receiver. A bit of play stopped there, all the players. Of JP right on the 50 meter line. Oh, Paulton, that's a good ball to Treverson. And was at the breakdown point, Satole goes for the box option. Quapman with the. <laughs> A good first touch. And JP have the penalty for offside. Number 11 says the referee. Afrikaner. It's 
to Sonny Lisa Milani. It's football in the off-season. Lower team football. There he is, the brother of Andesile. You can see he even looks like him in stature. This is Bonga Ngumalo. Another of the youngsters who've been involved in the first team. They've done some interesting things in this JP team. Uh, they've taken their flanker and they've put him out at wing in uh, Ndipiwe Ndichi. It's in jersey number 11. But that is still Logan Leisha. Now Luke Cannon. Score now would certainly pick up the voices of the JP youngsters, Luca Trevison. Asima Koza will be the makeshift scrummy. Goes to Andre Poulton. Options both right and left. Rashi Vargas on the left-hand side. Satole will one-two on a big hit on the scrummy. Jeez, that was... Whoop. Whoop. He'll feel that one on Monday morning. But Poulton in the forward pack still come and knock on for JP. Satole is also back on his feet now. Being pushed back sufficiently, but there's a good and resistant fight back. Cannon Neymar. Didn't really have any options. He has Rashi Vaga and Similani all up there helping. Satole to the right where Trevison is. And Barges does the tight end. This is Rashi Vaga and Neymar with the long one. And it's, uh, it's a bit hospital. Rashi Vaga signaling to maybe calm it down. He sees saying there, not quite like that. And someone's suffered a knock. JP forward coach, him, Mr. Hammond is right here. The commentary box, getting some instructions with walkie talkies and not pleased is what I can report to you from the commentary position. When we down for too long, will Ross Calvert. And he's holding his arm, I wonder whether he'll be able to continue. <laughs> Judging by the claps on the side and everything Indicated by a Westville perspective, doesn't look like he'll still play. So, advantage ball still, JP, the Sima Koza, and there comes the four by four. The Shashin probably comes straight from the top here where Hammond is. Trevison and the like pushing, it's a Tole also involved. Backline itching to get their share of the play. They won't mind if they're able to get over. There's a persistent fight for the West Fort boys. Oh, that's good defensive work. That's just how to defend. Patient with it. Forcing the mistake from the JP side. And it looks like at halftime it may just be JP High School for boys in trouble and trailing for the first time in a long time. I don't think they've trailed at half time, I stand to be corrected, since that great college game. Because since then they've picked up for him, almost become untouchable. Westfall have come to Johannesburg with an agenda in mind. That's one thing I can tell you because not at the venue, they're making lots of noise. They're putting pressure on the JP side. And the scoreline says it. But it hasn't quite been the way the black and whites would have envisioned. And the lack of noise also from their side tells you. It's very telling. Will be a line out. But a wasteful set piece. So they'll quieten down a bit. Kluter, the talisman. Nice with the set piece. Out to Pistor. 
Oh, that's a good pickup. He's lost it forward. Lindalani will go to Sanele Samalani who will dance inside again. A couple of tackles. Lots of traffic where Samalani was headed there. Satole goes nice and short to Leisha. Andre Poulton, the loose head. We need to release the ball now, JP. It's turned over. And here come the opposite side. Laid off wall. And he sent him the wrong way. Here comes Africano inside. Oh, Africano is going. Tackle by the JP man to stop him. Sees here, wasteful. Can't get a hold of themselves. Back to Africana. Slips. Guapman will play makeshift and go to his forward. And the captain, Seth Quinn. So they'll calm it down a bit now, but they'll still come. And there's that space. Oh, he's knocked it on. He's knocked it on for Westville. Could have been in. Probably would have caused further grey hairs to the developing ones on Coach Fenter's hair already. And JP will just be wanting to go to that halftime break. Hear yeah, what the coach has to say. The Juvenate. I mentioned they made those few changes. Change 10. Different back line. Some forwards that have taken to the back line. Sometimes you're inventive and it works. As it worked for Chepi so far, those changes that they've made. I let the experts decide. Quaza nice and short to Satole. Skips a couple. This is telling Satole to his head boy, Quaza. Who stopped before the 50 meter mark. Naima Long picked up once again by Mjiji. Mjiji, it's that man that they move from flank to, to outside. And maybe that pace tells you why they moved him. Setole, nice and short to Leisha. 35 minute mark, and Rashi Vaga is chasing this. It may land favorably. Oh, ho, ho. it's good optimism by the deputy head boy. They have the penalty advantage right up the throats of Westville boys. And as a matter of fact, the time has lapsed in the official first off. The Chepi side of things, very much quiet as they try to lift up their sound a bit here. This could give them something. Nahama, the debutante, tries something clever with Rashi Varga. It hasn't worked out. But they still come again. To be desperate for a try now. Oh, and there comes the penalty, the way of Westville. That won't count for anything. The referee had long blown his whistle for the penalty, the side of Westville. And JP may go into half time with lots of words and lots of things to think. And lots of words to hear from their coaching crew. Peter Ngoveni, Drakas Venter, and Mr. Hammond, I'm sure, will have lots to say. And on the other side, Jabula Zulu will probably be saying the same thing. More of the same pressure, more of the same thing. Free as a look at his watch and says time's up, but he'll let this line out progress. This will be the last movement of the first half. Chris Kluter. Corsa gathers and goes to Ngomalo. 
Good work by the captain. He's won a couple of those. The vice captain, rather. And he's there again. The head boy of the school. Says he joined from Limpopo. About grade 9, 10. Got a call from Kuti and said, we need to move. This is him, Rashi Varga. Oh, big hit on Logan Leisha. Nomalo goes to Poulton. This is good work among the forwards. Kosa, it's still available and it's picked up. And oh, Lindelani! Lindelani scores for JP to restore a bit of parity at the half time break. It's Lindelani and Gambule, the winger. That cuts into the defense like a hot knife through butter. And the youngster in the first team is certainly earning his black and white stripes. Lindelani Mkampule. Remember that name, ladies and gents. I've watched this youngster a couple of times. In that game against Gray, he was very good as well. Didn't do much wrong. And he's got a response and parity. And probably much needed parity from a JP perspective. So, the chaos will all be at order once again. Boring, 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 of course, the kick by Rashi Varga. Let's see. And so chaos restored, order of things in the balance once again as we head into the halftime break. It's even Steven between JP High School for Boys and Westville Boys High after 35 minutes of rugby. Two tries apiece, two converted tries apiece, and what's been an exciting game of rugby so far in Kensington. Well, geez, we hope you have enjoyed the watch at home Running out of my breath here in the commentary position with signals and it's probably time for us to take a short break. It's 14 all at halftime. Stay with us. We will be right back.
So welcome back then to the second period of this annual friendly game between JP High School for boys as well as Westville. It's an exchange truly this, because friendly it definitely has been. It's, four, it's sitting, the score sitting at 14 all as we head into the second half. So buckle in, it's bound to be one hell of a ride. JP attacking the try line to the right of your screen. Westville to the left. Thirty-five minutes to decide who goes away with this year's victory. I said last year, won by JP. Year before Westville, there before Westville. And so, 2020, no games. 2019, once again, Westville. And so, JP have gathered it there. Tole goes to Corsa and then there's the break of the line. There's the skip and then there he's grieving and going. Ho oh, oh, ho! It's powerful and he's over Luke Cannon. And that's the type of response that JP High School for Boys would have envisioned. That's exactly what they would have wanted to do. And Luke Cannon, the big, the big lock, has something for himself on the day. JP boys slowly finding voice. Ashivaga has not missed yet from the kicking tee. This is his third one. Not too difficult either. In fact, most of the kicks he's had haven't been too from all too much of a difficult kicking range. And so he's made life work of them. Kuti Rashivaga, the vendor man of power. So, Guapman kicks us off for the restart with JP in the lead for the first time in the game. In fact, last year something similar as we see Talent Satole 
does have Riz Makosa following him and the big man will chase it will be gathered and caught by Mjeji nice offload to Similani oh. no real correspondence before making that pass and they could be hurt Rashivaga stops Unatim Lonchoa Picks up, does Ryan Pistor. It was a 25-22 victory, that one against Monument. Three points. Big three-point gap as Naima catches it straight from the air and then goes to Lindalani. Then to respond for JP. Westall have also won against Pearson this year, 18-11. Lost to Ronda Bosch at the end of March, 31-10. Gave Clifton an absolute smack before they were on the way to the Saints uh, Easter Festival. Beat them 53-3. Those have been some of their games this year. They started the year with a loss to Michaelaus. So it's been somewhat of a mixed bag of results for them this year that handling is not the greatest but suffices Blake Alban waiting Mlonchua sends It's restful that profit there. JP man doesn't abide to the daylight rule there of rolling away. And so Gripman will go out and try to put Westfall back into things. Kepi have also been in action quite some time this year. 47 11 against St. Stithians last week. At the Cares Easter Festival, they scored 59 on day two, 47 on day one, beats both Brandbach and Queens. The last time that this Jeppy team lost was the 22nd of March. That game against Paul Boys at NMI United States. That will feel like a long time ago. Sit all it. So a try score a quick man sends the grabber behind the back. Chippy also this year lost to Grasfontein in the mix. 37-31, that was a close game against one of the best sides in this year. And they actually ended last year against the DHS. Recall that, 39-36. It's good work there by Wang Gando. Been involved in the first team for quite some time, been getting proper minutes today. This is Sitole and calls of holding for him a Westfall perspective and there the referee hears them and warrants a penalty to Westfall. Looking in the one year, 2015, Westfall dominated that year against JPR Oscar for boys in the entire fixture that won 15 out of 20. And Melanchua this time says I pack my ability and I'm gonna go for the three from that penalty from holding. It's the first time as a matter of fact in both the second and the first team game that seeing a 10 go directly for the kicking option. But we've seen this youngster he knows how to kick is the most important thing. 
the tricky ones that have required him to really calculate those angles. He's got them right. And you bet he has that one right as well. Kicking wise, it's three from three from Unatim Lonchua. And the deficit reduced to just four points now. 21 17 game. Tell you what, Chippy High School for Boys would have known coming into this one that it's not going to be a walkover against this Westfield team. So, Matthew Kutsia now on, back on. And he goes right out and not how he would have envisioned to make his first kick of the game. So, the youngster that's received so much highlights this year. Kutsia is replacing debutant Naima Hollenbach. Ryan Pistol. Scum collapses. We'll feel chats of both forward packs again. It's telling you about that 2021 year where we saw it so good that year. They'd won 15 from the 20 uh, rugby games, but JP dominated hockey wise, winning them 50, uh, 10 from their 15. But historically, uh, even hockey wise, the battles have been quite good. Westville have a, a decent hockey set up themselves. Montjoie. Montjoie. Yeah, Zonati, Kluter, sends Landalani away, but he comes back, helps in the rug points. Big hit by Reese Mitchell, Polo man, Kluter steps inside. Westfall, there's something about them now that spurred them on. Bandilim Gwango is still going. Now he's brought down. He hasn't quite released though yet. Now he looks like he does. Pistol. Looks right. The drift. Goes to the skipper. And they're very patient with the moments. Phase after phase. On their running back line comes in. Michael Satadi. That's that Afrikaner. And there's a knock on there. Forty-five minutes in, ten into the second half means that we have twenty-five to go in Johannesburg. Westfall don't want to come away with nothing in terms of this Collard field. They haven't won anything yet. Two draws at 15 A's and 14 A's. 16 A went to JP. Seconds went to JP. Satole out. Matthew Kutsia has gone out wide to Lendelani with the Kusi and he's taking on Gubman on his outside. Lendelani is just out but he's kept in the pitch. Oh, that's a good winger. Oh, but he's giving it away there. And they, for all the good work that they do there, JP, they go and give it away right up. Once they've made the good territory. And he's been very interesting too, Jade Will Quipman. I'm not sure, I think it's an old boy that's conducting the cheerleading now for Westville. There he is. You see him at the bottom of your picture. That's an old boy. 
very much passionate. Yep. I think no one does it like school sports in South Africa. Yep, because if he was an official cheerleader, he'd be dressed in the blazer. It's obviously a wasteful boy residing here in Cherbourg since after. He wants to go have some fun with the cheerleading. This is Kluter. Chippy disrupts that set piece. But West will have the advantage. Pastor goes for the box kick option to send Chippy back. And the referee comes back to give a penalty for a knock on to Westville. Four point game this last year it ended up being a 12 point game right towards the end. 43 31 to JP. So, how it actually works if you're just joining us now. Uh, this JP Westville annual exchange game. One year JP will go to Westville, and the other year JP will uh, Westville will come here, and then the boys get hosted in the homes of the JP guys. So Tolle is involved in lots of drama there at the moment. He loves it. So then the guys at Westville then stay at the various JP homes. Some stay in the hostel, but JP boys then have the duty of hosting the boys. It makes for quite a nice uh, weekend of school sports, if you may. JP have kept this one in. Now they've gone to Similani. Sends it right into the Westville stands. Now the JP boys will try to make noise for Kluter. That's what Westville have been doing the entire time for their set pieces. A wind Kluter up now. Well executed set piece and now they come out. Hand movement sufficient. Afrikaner on the other side. Pistols there at the breakdown point and he goes short to Kina. Now to the right hand side where Satade is. Michael Satade. Also so good that outside center. As I say that perhaps a bit of a commentator's curse there, he holds it on. And there hasn't been a score in some time then, 10 or so minutes. JP is scoring right in the beginning of the second half. Then a penalty for Westville. Converted by Lonchua. Bonga Ngomalo. Picked up by Risma Koza. Talents the toilet. The toilet still moving. His stature reminds me a bit of Tiro Tsauna, who played in JP's second team in 2019 and 2020. Tiro's actually coaching the second team. It reminds me a lot of Tiro uh, does the toilet. This is Kutsia. Nice bit of passing. Lendalani makes sure to cut back inside. That's what he does so well. Now he offloads it to Similani. It's totally one of those scrummies that get there really quickly to the breakdown. Make sure that there's no stoppage in the play at all. Look at how quickly he's there once again too. Mongwana. Sitole picks up and goes. And the then gives penalty to the way of Jeppy. Four offside. 
And these are the ones where Kutsia would really kick them and score in that uh, Grey College triumph. And I'm sure he's not asking for something similar. Going for the kicking option. Touch. Says so not under pressure just yet. We can go further up and get the maximum points. There he is. 17 of the points against Grey College belong to Matthew Kutsia. It's such a wizardry of a game kicking that day. Bonga Ngumalo will go to the middle. Logan Leisha. And a guy called Calvin Cooper said JP that was really good out in the line out a couple of years ago too. This is Mongwana. And Justin Kellerman, I think, also played flanker. Could see her. Nice offload to Lindalani. Have they lost it there in the mix of things, JP? It looks like they have. That's Evan Wallman for Westville. Guapman sends up the throat of Samalani. Has Kutsia to help. 1 2. Niga Niga. Samalani grabber is stopped in the midfield. Will that lead to an obstruction? I think that's what the referee said. Just uh, over a quarter of an hour to go in this one. And this time, I think Kutsia bringing on the kicking tee. Yep, and the referee, that is for an obstruction. Um, Matthew Kutsia says, I'll do what I do best. It's going to be the man that he came on for that brings him the kicking tee. Naima. That's succession right there. So, a couple of yards out. His first one for the day. Matthew could see it. Gets the three points for JP to take them up to 24 and to take the game to a seven point one. Can't wait to see what that youngster can do in the season. What potential provincial greatness awaits him. I'm sure he already has the likes of Craven Week, Academy Week in his mind, at the back of his mind. See what's how the season's able to go. Restart those good by Westville. Good pressure high up there on JP, and I think they profit from it here. They do have the advantage. So. That's how to come back from a restart. Kluter is trying to get a hold of that one. Lots of members squirming now. Piston now. They've got it out. Trying to cut that gap was Blake Alton. To the right. And the referee says, go on, Westfall, still yours. Big counter rock by JP, who may have just turned this one over. And they have, you bet they have, that's good. Good defensive acumen there at the back by JP. And just when we thought that Westfall were high up and that they could potentially do something, they've held on to it and JP get a penalty. Happy to see that he is okay and able to play, uh, Matthew. Interested to see how the Park Town and Cage result goes. It's another game to watch out for here on your home of school sport taking place right now in another part of Johannesburg, Park Town. And the noise begins once again to put pressure on the JP man. Joseph Zulu, I think, come on as a replacement in the hooker role. Taken well there by Zulu. 
played in this first team last year. Could see how that's a nice kick behind the back for Similani to chase. And they still put pressure high up there. He's solitary at the moment and the referee tells him to move away. High pressure up there now by JP, but Mlanchua comes out. Falls for Kutsia. He's setting up something now. It's for the step into traffic himself. Lindalani goes to the big Zulu. Just seven points still in this one. That was Poulton. Westfall coach and Jabulo Zulu on his feet. Although he's still very calm at the moment, you see him there on the other side of your picture. This is Luke Cannon. Pick up by Zulu again. And then another one by Andre Paulton. And then another one to Satole. And Satole crosses the line for JP. Look at the emotion on Wang Ando's face. And there. Talent Satole finally rewarded for his efforts today. Rewarded for his persistence, his consistency. Gets a try of his own to so maybe just get JP that cushion and confirm the result. With just under now, a dozen minutes to go. Puts it between the sticks, gets the further two, and JP go to 31. Would be the first time in some time that JP gets the back to back against West Bowl two years in a row. Haven't been able to do that for some time go back to about 2017 16 the last time that was done properly and then we have one good team and then one team that's not so great and then it operates in that way and Westville beat you when they're there they beat you uh, when they come here so we'll be really looking to get back to back years for the likes of Russia Vaga they would have played now in both classes But Sia goes to the hands of Mlonchua. Running it up at the moment. One on one with Rajivaga who gets him down. And Lindalani has come away with it now. Good work by Chepi there. They're trying to bring him down. Talents Atole chooses to take up the role and the responsibilities. He's taken down. Keeping good hold of the ball. Lindalani will now go to Andre Poulton. His opposite number, Kona Maseko. Was ready for him. <laughs> Terminator. Wangandu. Maiden. Matthew Kutsia. The Simakosa is able to make do. This is MGG. Sends a man down. And now lays one off. This is Sanele Simalani. Cuts inside. Now still Simalani. Now lays one off to Mongwana. Big tackle on Mongwana. Poulton. Jeffy looking and Matthew gets. Rashivaga loses to take the gap. Similani won't keep a hold of it, although it will be a wistful knock on. So exciting at times, this JP team, when they start passing that ball around. Now will be a scrum. Right up there. And 
Jimmy boys just finding their voices now. Final few moments of this game. Next year then it means JP will he head to Westville for this invitational, this exchange rather. That's what they like to call it, an exchange. Operates like that, although it's just for an evening. Spend an evening in an, another boy's house who goes to another boy's school in a different province. And myself was also hosted back in 2019 at Westville. And that was nice. And then the boys take you to the pavilion that side. <laughs> Much more stabilized game as Mr. Hammond gestures to me here since Mason Kutia coming on. Well, Matthew Kutia rather. A big shove there by JP. What it comes now, Mlonchwa. Kwapman can move. Afrikaner can also move, and he finds another man. That's the big 13, Satade. Ryan still on his feet, and he goes to Afrikaner. Let's fall just over the 50 meter line now. The right hand side, Africana will receive again. There's the step and there's the ankle tap. Bring him just out. Sure, he has no room to go into. Montra inside goes Seth. He's still moving, Seth. Say, Captain. Coming in from the side is warranted a penalty. Right eye up there. They want to take it quickly, they don't want to take any prisoners now. But he won 17. Another penalty for Westville. Guatman goes to Kluter, the talisman. That one's picked up by Reese Mitchell. Still operating on an advantage also. It's a black and white shirt in that defense and he bodges into one. Black Alban. To take in, so comes to a heavy hit. But handling's not the greatest, and the referee will still wave the advantage the way of Westville. In fact, it's a penalty now for Westville. They'll come again. Kupman wants to go. This is Kluter. Kluter's just short. Five minutes to go. This will we'll love another score. The fans think they could get it now. This is David Humphreys. Haven't seen too much of him, the eighth man. To the right hand side. There's space there for Satade. The Braves are on for Westville. Nice and short to Maseko. Still can't quite power over. There's a closer angle there. The Penguins make a change also. Waka Manaka on the side. Second team captain. Mwango just keeping their defense and they would support them at the back. Short to Mitchell again. Very patient with the phase of the phase at the moment. Lonchua goes to boot. Oh! That's a beautiful try by Westville. Evan Moorman linking up so well with this 10. When I team and that's what a good number 10 gives you. And then you have a player like that, Norman, that can finish off in the coolest of fashions. Wow, that was nice. That was very nice. 
Matim Lontua gets the two and splits the sticks. And he's rolling. He wants to go. They want to go. They want more. They don't want to hear the full-time whistle yet. Although they're four minutes from hearing it, they, they want a response. They need it now. And that that's well on course to giving them that. Four minutes to go on the snake pit at the Collard Field. Up next, JPI School for Boys will go to up this next week. It's going to be a nice one. It comes so close against Hafiz in recent years. Imagine that in the year that they're having, perhaps that blessing lies also in store. We'll see next week, Saturday. And then the weekday after, it's the big derby against King Edward. 27 April, mark it somewhere in your calendar. It's JPK's, baby. As for what the advantage. Played and cut back. Won't get there, Will Salate, Afrikaner, another one's other. But this exchange, not one of its own. There's a couple that happen as well, involving other boys' schools. Marysburg College, you have a big one with Pretoria Boys Highway. Also an exchange, boys I will go there the one year, Maritzburg will come the other. That's going to come also, look at that in around about May, should be good. Always nice when we have these inland coastal battles. So it's all it. He's got nice and short days there once again. This one will be, be picked up by Chevis and it appears. And it with some resistance. Mlongwana, Matsumi. Because of holding, Zulu's trying to get that ball out too. Now he's got it out. Short again for JP. So our clock is almost reaching 70, but the clock at the venue still has about 75 seconds left for Rashid Vaka to do exactly that. Oh, Mlongwana Samalani picks up. Sanele Samalani! Won't go over, it won't count. He thought, he thought. An infringement before. That would have been nice. I thought he was over too. But a scrum for Westfield. In the last 40 seconds of the game. And then JP will have to wait for more than 15 months to play Westfield here at the Snake Pit again. The next time that they'll play Westfall will have to be at the in front of the Powdens Pavilion all the way in the Zululand. They've lost that one forward. The time has officially elapsed. Five seconds to go and JP Paul. You must feel that they've done the job, they've done good work. And their confidence grows and booms ahead of their big clash against African school office next week and then King Edward thereafter. For Westville, they'll be in action also themselves against some of the schools that side. Still need to play Kersley. Games against Maritzburg. Kenwood also still in store. They played Durban High last week. Continue watching your future World Cup winners and Olympians right here with us on your home of school sports. 
Speaking of World Cup winners, Chasing the Sun episode 2 should be out tomorrow, so you can check that as well at 8 p.m. South African time. Katia sends the ball out and sends that's that. And that brings an end to the 2024 Kepi Westwell Exchange. And it ends in triumph for the black and white for the second year in a row. Last year it was 43 31. This time they've come away with a 31 24 victory. Seven points and a good display by what was a Westville team that really did pick their hands up and take the game to JP, especially in that first half. But at the end, the black and white prevail and it remains JP High School for Boys, the informed team in 2024 at the moment. So thank you so much for joining us for that coverage. We've been tuned into your home of school sports and your home of rugby development, super sports schools. Thank you so much. And until the next one, it's a JP victory, 31-24. Goodbye.